Yeah, give me uh, one second, please. Uh, I will start the stream in YouTube and uh, then uh, we will continue. Just uh, one more time, I remind everyone that we do this live yeah, streaming me, uh, and one, also record uh, uh, yeah, sessions. Give me, uh, one second, please. Uh, I will okay. start the... I don't like when I hear my voice. <laughs> Because uh, we want to do it for educational purposes. A lot of founders, they really learn from others. Uh, and uh, also they learn from uh, questions that investors do ask uh, during the Q&A session. Um, I underline this once again for all participants because uh, one time only we had the case that someone did not really pay attention to that. And when we had uh, to cut <laughs> in the middle, um, uh, only one pitch. Uh, so right now everyone is informed. Uh, we are live and I'm very glad to welcome uh, all uh, of uh, you who joined us here in Zoom and all uh, our uh, viewers, uh, watchers and followers in YouTube. Uh, it is the first VC Shark Tank pitching session by in mind in 2021. And I'm sure that um, it will be uh, really very good because we have strong startups here. We have strong investors. All the investors have very similar focus. All of them focus in uh, B2B uh, SaaS uh, startups, enterprise solutions in uh, different verticals, uh, but on the stage which we can consider to be late seed or A, uh, with already good traction and um, or first sales or at least um, uh, first pilots with corporates, but uh, uh, on strong positions. So uh, before we start and switch to pitching sessions, I would really love uh, investors participating here to uh, give a, a brief self-introduction of uh, your fund and uh, your investment focus, criteria, etc. So that uh, not only startups, but also other investors will know it. And hopefully uh, you can also co-invest together. We will gladly put you in touch with each other after this session. So can we start from Dana Kutash? Oh, Ktai Shat. Sorry, Dana. <laughs> Something is wrong with my language today. <laughs> okay. okay. Thank you, Nelly. Um, so I am Dana. I am a part of the AB Ventures team. AB Ventures is the corporate uh, venture arm of the Air Bank. We are based in Jordan. Air Bank is the largest in the country, has the largest banking network in the MENA region with presence in over 26 countries, more than 600 branches across five continents and over 50 billion US dollars in assets. So we are an early stage fintech focused 30 million US dollars fund. The fund was established in early 2018 as a key pillar in Air Bank digital innovation strategy. So we are a team of four, none of which were ever bankers. I myself, before joining the team back in 2018, worked at one of the leading brokerage firms in Jordan. It's called First Investment Group as a financial analyst. And before that, I was part of the treasury department at McLeod Jordan. So our investment mandate is global and we consider fintech in its broadest definition, meaning everything that falls under the fintech umbrella. This is evident by our portfolio of eight companies from the alternative level lending, payments, open banking, and rep tech sectors scattered across Europe and the US. So our ticket size ranges between 500,000 US dollars up to 3 million, while our sweet spot is between 1 to 2 million. We can maximize our ticket or do follow-on investments. Our main area of focus when we invest is the forecasted IRR. And as a corporate venture arm of the bank, we also focus on the strategic alignment with the bank, where the solutions of our portfolio companies can be integrated into the bank's financial services value chain across its multiple penetrated markets. So this is us in a nutshell. Wow, that was a pitch. <laughs> <laughs> like Kalashnikov, uh, really very fast, but <laughs> very, very complete. <laughs> Amazing, Dana, thanks so much. Um, <laughs> So uh, everyone understood that Arab Bank is a CVC, corporate venture of the largest banking structure in Jordan uh, with a really broad uh, focus of investments. Uh, so uh, Gary Plachak, uh, Gary from Willy Finance uh, Swiss Family Office. Perfect, thank you so much uh, for, for the invite. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, a couple of words about uh, Willy Finance, uh, we are a family office uh, based in, in Zurich, Switzerland, and we invest the wealth across multiple asset classes, 
uh, one of which is, is venture capital and, and private equity. And this space, uh, we focus on biotech and, uh, and B2B software. And especially um, today's focus, of course, is B2B software. But uh, in that space, our, our sort of even more narrowed focus is around the Series A or, or later stages. Uh, that we typically define as uh, as a one billion um, uh, revenue in in uh, ideally in recurring revenue. That's typically the threshold where we start to engage with with startup partners, uh, and then uh, we follow them on across uh, uh, multiple financing rounds. Uh, initially, from our side, we tend to invest uh, between uh, two and five million euros, and then, uh, as I said, uh, following on on uh, different. Uh, uh, investment rounds and uh, and uh, across life cycle stages. Um, I myself come from a computer science and software engineering background, and uh, as a consultant previously, I had the experience to uh, to guide some of our, our large corporates across their digital transformation and digital strategy and, and strategy reviews. So uh, this topic is is very close to my heart. Any company that has a strong uh, software engineering core is uh, is a really strong plus uh, or has, has a strong plus in, in my mind. And some of the, the favorite topics are, are around applied AI, cybersecurity, IT infrastructure, and enterprise process optimization. And uh, just reflecting a, a bit, on, a bit on, on Dana's point of view, we tend to not do a, a lot of fintech. So it's great to have someone who's, who's an expert in the area. So. <clears throat> Indeed, uh, thank you, Gary. And if you love uh, software so much, uh, then you probably will specifically enjoy this session because majority of the startups here, all the startups here are very strong in software. Uh, I'm proud of them. And uh, I want to tell that uh, also we have a colleague of Gary here, Katarina Iten, but uh, uh, she will probably... Uh, Katarina, do you want to tell a few words uh, from your side? Or, no, um, uh, she will be a kind of silent guest uh, observing startups in media tech. Yes, I can say hello. Oh, okay, amazing. <laughs> Katarina. I will definitely, I'm, I'm a silent guest. Uh, just uh, thank you, Gary, for the introduction. And um, so basically, I'm in charge of digital media investment from uh, for with the finance. And I thought it makes more sense if Gary would uh, join the the you know the whole discussion because it's a bit more of his focus area. But uh, yeah, I will be a silent. Uh, a listener in that sense. <laughs> Thank you. Just don't get, keep it in yourself. If you have some questions uh, after the startup pitch, don't uh, hesitate to ask them together with Gary. Perfect. I will. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Amazing. Thank you. And uh, another investor I want uh, to give a word to is Marius Adamski, partner at FF Venture Capital. And probably Marius will explain what does FF mean. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Um, so as you said, FF Venture Capital was founded in 2008 in uh, New York City. FF uh, stands for founder friendly. So we have a very founder friendly approach when, when it comes to, to, to uh, the platform. Um, historically, we've invested in over 122 companies. Um, we manage currently $230 million. Uh, we primarily focus on the, on the seed, Series A, and right now we are entering more in Series B. Um, I would say that currently we have 72 uh, active portfolio companies. We've built over 8 billion of uh, market cap value. We've had some, you know, um, couple exits on, on NASDAQ. Currently we have approximately 12 companies on our portfolio that are ripe for the IPO. Uh, one thing that differentiates us is that approximately 60% of our seed investments were able to raise uh, Series B, which is six times higher than the industry average. Um, we have five funds that focus on North America. We have one fund that's located in Poland, um, focuses on Central and Eastern Europe. Um, and this fund is actually um, primarily where I come from. I actually manage the fund um, with, uh, with another partner. Um, uh, we have like a one firm approach, you know, and, and our you know, value proposition is, you know, we are very hands on approach. Value proposition is that we, we sort of bridge, you know, European companies to the US market. We help them raise money, much larger ones in the US. Uh, we have over 900 other investors that co-invested with us historically. 
we've been in the market for a long period of time, so we have a we are pretty credible partner for co-investments. Co co and um, and one actually unique aspect of the Polish fund is that it's in collaboration with the Totalizator Sportowy, which is um, I guess the the only lot lottery company in Poland and monopolies of online gambling. So, you know, naturally we're looking for some collaboration between the companies that we invest in and uh, Totalizator Sportowy. Totalizator Sportowy could become the first client, obviously paid one. And um, we actually, you know, we help the businesses, you know, to build the value over a long period of time. Amazing, Mario. Thank you very much. And um... Startup founders participating here. Pay attention to what Marius just have said. Uh, so actually, from FF Venture Capital, you can get access also to their portfolio companies that can become your first, uh, or not first, uh, but your clients uh, for your solutions. So don't hesitate uh, to establish this relationship and make your lead generation there. Uh, and uh, only one investor is missing now, David. Uh, David Bolton from DIP Capital. Uh, I think he will join us a little bit later. So we will not wait to anyone and uh, we will start right now. I want to give the word to the first founder and to remind that every founder will have five minutes to pitch. And uh, you can definitely, you are in, uh, inspired to share your pitch deck uh, during the presentation, please. I will have to stop you after the five minutes. Don't be offended uh, and disappointed with me. It's just because everyone should have the same conditions and everyone should uh, uh, have the same time. Uh, and uh, yep, indeed, uh, I see that BI already uh, started sharing the presentation. So meet BI, company from Israeli and the founder Asav Binstock. Asav, your five minutes. Oh, I forgot. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. Uh, very nice being here. So uh, we are a fintech company and enterprise software working primarily with credit providers, banks and different uh, financial institutions. I myself come uh, from a background of uh, I was a CEO of uh, Israeli largest uh, strategic research company, served a lot of banks, uh, insurance company and uh, helped those companies mature through the digital transformation. And therefore, we found that there's a huge gap in the market there's spiking risk, especially now after COVID-19, but also before. But the risk modeling, the risk underwriting is still very cumbersome process. If Dana knows from the bank, uh, the structure and the tools that needs to uh, be applied are very, very cumbersome and not utilizing almost 80% uh, of the data potential that those institutions have. Not talking about external data sources and so forth. Just this morning, I had a presentation with a customer and they wanted agile risk modeling because they have, here they are on the right, they had many, many loans offering, many different products for many different segments. And if each of these products automatically in the website needs to get a, a quote, needs to be underwritten, needs to be evaluated, you need some automatic software that does everything streamlined and what you see in the left hand side is our solution that fits exactly this. Each rectangle is a model that is connected to a product or a user a segment and everything via APIs in real time gets the uh, underwriting going. The technology that underlies everything is a complete end-to-end -end solution. It takes care of the entire data journey from data acquisition, all the transformation, a lot of IP in algorithms that chew the bank data and optimizes the feature or super feature generation. M models are being completely transparent, even if they are machine learning advanced ones, uh, fully explainable. This is one of our four day uh, spots. Then a decisioning system and moving them to production. By doing that, we save the bank six different data or uh, providers or data transfer um, systems. We do all in one horizontal uh, solution. And we are able to reach a very large lift in the model accuracy for the banks. This is a logistic regression um, customer, that, uh, um, a huge bank that worked with the logistic regression uh, model to identify defaulted customers. We were able to elevate by 32% the accuracy of their models. If you're translating this to actual business 
they are able to reduce the default by 19% or sell more credit by 15%. Doing that in a market that has huge market potential, you are talking about the risk analytics market and you're talking about tens of billions of dollars only today with a very high uh, CAGR and with write-ups from all the major uh, consultancy companies and so forth on the expansion, especially in the post-COVID world. So our traction is doing pilots with the most uh, big bank in the uh, markets. We operate in Europe, we operate in India and uh, East uh, Asia, and we're starting now in Latin America. We did not uh, start with the US yet, looking to get uh, working with uh, VCs from the US in order to have more uh, ammunition going into the market strong. Our product is fully developed and we are currently with uh, nine more uh, enterprise banks that evaluate the solution, four are in midst of pilot. We've generated in our past uh, over $1 million in revenue and uh, we were uh, able to, um, to raise uh, $3.6 million. We are now raising $1.5 million uh, and it can go up to two. And this is only to support our market side growth. The solution, which you can just look at the glance here is fully developed. I am welcoming you to schedule a demo and I'll give you all the explanations you need. Super Asaf, thank you very much for your presentation. You are perfectly in time, just uh, as you have Swiss uh, Alps background uh, on your laptop, uh, you have a Swiss uh, attitude to be in time. Investors, please, uh, your questions. So maybe I, I'll go first. Can, can you give us a little bit more details about your traction, you know, about your uh, client base, current client base, and uh, what, what kind of revenues uh, did you generate last year? Yes, so we had previously worked with uh, the largest banks in Israel. Uh, we've, we've done a first product pivot in 2018. Up till that point, we've reached uh, $1 million, uh, approximately $1 million in revenue. Uh, Facebook Cambridge Analytica uh, crisis changed our business model and product. We've changed to a more robust product offering and less of a services uh, modeling project. And uh, since then, we've done a paid project with a few of the largest banks uh, and going now to uh, but, but have, establish. Have, have, have you done POCs or have you done, uh, or do you have, you know, recurring revenues? Most of them are POCs currently, and we are now just about to sign a few uh, recurring. Okay, and one, one, one last question. Like in terms of, you know, do you, do you keep the data on premise or off premise? Great question. The solution is installed on premise for the, uh, each customer. It could be on uh, Kubernetes, on Docker, it's container based. And usually banks like to have it on prem. Thank you. Thank you, Marius, for your questions. Any more questions from investors? Yes, Dana, I yes. have a question. How long does it take for you to install your product, in, meaning your, uh, your implementation cycle? How long is it? And can you tell us more about your business model? Please. Yes, uh, implementation takes 10 minutes. Uh, sorry, but it, it is. Uh, and it, it is, we are the blue structure and we're just putting the entire uh, software in bank, connecting to application database and that's it. We're ready to go. Uh, business model is user-based license and annual license and uh, each user is additional uh, fee. So the bank can start with us small, uh, just with two, three uh, analysts and grow up until 30, 40, uh, as many people that are working on analytics in the bank. Okay, another question. You said that you raised 3.6 million uh, over how many rounds and what is your, the, the founder's ownership of the company? So founder own just about 40% and uh, we've had consecutive rounds of uh, um, SL, um, CLAs. And I think that's it. Okay, thank you. No more questions from my side. 
And how about the uh, the return on on the investment? How long does it take for a bank to uh, to recover the money that they uh, spend on your solution? I think that this could be uh, between one to one point five years only, uh, and the I think that within two years of implementation, the return on investment is going to cover the ten years of cost of fee that we are going to have in the bank. The amount that the bank can uh, benefit between 10 and 20 percent in lowering default rates could be significant as to tens of millions of dollars per bank. And we do not charge tens of millions of dollars, so we already have the ROI instantly. Thank you. Gary, are you satisfied? No more questions? Okay. Yeah, that's clear for me. Thanks. Okay, good. Thank you, Asaf. And, um, uh, hope that you will find either investor or maybe some corporate client for you among uh, participating banks i cross my fingers and right I, now I have, I have i have to go now okay so sorry for everybody i'm not listening of course. i'm going to uh, meet the customer we will bye. reach out later bye so right now i want to give a word to the founder from spain the company is called robin brick and the founder hernan comes hernan Come hey, on. i'm here Five minutes. Five minutes. Okay. I'll share screen. <clears throat> All right, you can see it, right? Uh, we are Robin Brick. It's the Robin Hood of the brick and mortar. Our purpose is to help physical stores. Uh, so what we find out is that the, the physical stores have zero changes since since ever. Actually, they are worse now than they were in the eighties because the service is not as good as it used to be and they are losing market share, as we all know, to e-commerce. We think that e-commerce has progressed a lot, but actually it's like in the 90s. It's still a catalog that you pull up online and make some beautiful merchandise around it, but all has progress. It's the advanced analytics part behind it, the speed, but the experience for the consumer is pretty much the same, just a bit more beautiful. So it is time to go to combine the best of the physical with the best of the digital, and that will be the physical services. Uh, the, the video commerce, that that's what actually we're doing now, uh, has been growing in the 2020 over 1,400%, according to some of our competitors. Uh, what we do is we offer four different types of services. We make uh, appointments that after will be either in the physical space or will be through video with people in the store. Um, and then the, the, the salesman can be prepared. They know what the customer wants, their size, their name, and they can have the stock prepared so to achieve an excellent service. And then we also have an immediate call, which is kind of like a WhatsApp business, but much improved. WhatsApp business always ends up with uh, the customer not getting answered on the phone. We put a lot of layers so that there is always an answer. And then a fourth service, they call one to many, where you can make shows. Uh, and also uh, one with presents where you can customize the present and not just send like 100 euro, but with a video of yourself showing that. Uh, and then once you take one of those services, then at the end, that's when the magic happens. You from home are connected in a video to the store and then they sell you the product. With that, we have uh, achieved, uh, depending on the brand, between 70 and 100 percent conversion rates. Once the call is established, and 14% conversion rates when they discover the service that they actually book the, the service. <clears throat> and a little bit about our business. Uh, our main two competitors are Hero and Bambuser. Uh, they have one has 10 million euro investment already, the other one has 62 million. And then we also have some cross selling from our previous product uh, where we also do optimizations in the store where we have like uh, more competitors but more fragmented. The retail sector is huge. I don't think I need to say that. It's very concentrated. 250 companies, they, they are about one fourth of the market. We want to reach a, a service attainable market of 2,673 million. Uh, this is our sales forecast. We have that very analyzed, uh, where we have all the companies we want to contact, the ones we already have contact, the ones we're in a hot leads, and the ones are selling and recommending us. And all this, I can share it later, but it's it's very thoroughly. That is a little bit what we've been doing. Uh, here is the period where we're very focused on advanced analytics. Uh, we did a pilot with Mayoral, one of the biggest fashion companies for children. And the moment of change for us was the COVID, where we kind of pivot uh, or made actually a Trojan horse. And then 
we started working with Dockers. Dockers recommended to the mother company, Levi's. And we expanded later to all the stores from Dockers and Levi's in Spain. Now we're also about to expand internationally with those brands. And we are getting the attraction from many companies. Like right now we have about 20 leads. Those ones are the listed ones that are the most hot, the almost closed. For example, one of them that has 14 shopping centers that includes 1,500 stores. Uh, also the brand from Ikea that they invest in, in, in shopping centers. And another shopping center, another show brand, uh, the Seawall, Pepe Jeans, you all know it, and several more brands. Uh, this is our team. It's very small, actually just Miguel and I. So we have managed to create this whole monster. And uh, Xavi, uh, as an external, also helping us. We have very good mentors, especially Andres Flores, that was Chief Information Officer from Bershka. Uh, Emma was Inditex Head of Human Resources for 15 years. She's from, um, uh, from IKEA. And well, a whole bunch of experts in the, in the sector. Uh, this is what we charge them per month, 150 euro per store and per month. That decreases as they have more stores. And uh, the cost, of course, is varying a lot. Uh, but here is analysis of how much it costs us to get a customer. We're uh, also having a lot of external salesmen, one, some of them in the decoration system, some of them in the fashion industry. We also have partnerships with uh, UX companies. And as of today, also with a payment system. And um, this is the money we have been raising so far. So I have been doing it myself. So the founders, that's me. Uh, private loans, which is me again, we got two, two loans, uh, no, two grants, sorry, which we don't have to pay back. One from the Catalan government as one of the best retail tech startups. Also the same thing with Neotech, it's a Spanish one. Hi. And now we're looking for a capital increase. And that's it. Let's go digital. <laughs> Thank you, Hernan, to be in time. Questions to Hernan and Robin Brick? Sure, so maybe I start again. Or Dana, do you want to start first? Okay, so... Uh, my question is, you know, uh, is it a mobile application or okay. like I'm, 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 I'm trying to understand, you know, where, where is the value in this company? Meaning, you know, um, uh, how like it, it is a platform based, like how do you acquire your clients? I understand that you're getting paid by, you know, largely uh, retail stores, but, you know, where are you getting, uh, you know, the user base from? Yeah, uh, no way we're doing an app. Nobody will download an app. Uh, what we do, it's, uh, we, it depends. We have shopping centers and we have brands. So what we do with brands, it's uh, we upload it in our website and we also upload it uh, as a tab in their website. That's where they discover the service. Uh, and then they, they go through through a carousel of questions like appointment, what kind of products are you interested of? All that is being saved. And then the employee has an app, but only the employee, the customer, when they uh, close the appointment, then what happens is that they receive an email and an SMS with a link. They just have to click on it. And then the, the conversation starts. And if it's the, the call that it's right away without appointment, then when, where they are in the service, they click on it and then the conversation starts as well. For the shopping centers, it's different. They have the luxury to have a very good starting point. They have thousands of uh, consumers already uh, that they are in their CRM system, plus the ones of all the brands in their shopping center. And then they also have a whole lot of uh, brands in their shopping center. So they have the perfect uh, ecosystem to create a platform. And then what we do is we develop the whole platform for them, including this system, which this system is actually the biggest thing on their website. And that's actually what is working the most. The shops that we are analyzing, the ones that are having most success is the ones where the leads are being provided by the shopping center. That's why uh, we're creating a lot of interest in that area. So no app for the end consumer. Okay. Maybe a quick follow-up question from my side, just uh, so I get this right. So the shop assistant who is in the in, in the shop has an app, and then whenever there is a kind of customer inquiry, then uh, the shop assistant can take that call basically yes. through the app, and then uh, we or she would guide the customers through the merchandise and exactly advice. And exactly. I have a question. 
I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You can continue. Uh, just, just a very quick follow up uh, up on that. And then, how do you balance? Because there might be like people in the shop who are then like waiting for people who are remote, and then or the other way around that the remote people are waiting for because yes. there's somebody at the that's shop. A, that's, a, that's an excellent point, and that is why WhatsApp business is not working or is working like hell hmm. because they don't understand the store operations. We do. We have the schedule of all the employees in the store, the opening hours, closing hours, how many employees are in the store, what time do they come, how much time do they need in advance to know that appointment is coming. And all of that is uh, in the algorithm. So like if you book now for Liva, it won't give you any appointment until tomorrow because it's already after four and they change the shift. If there is one employee only in the store, you will also not get an appointment. Okay. Uh, you make an immediate call. What we make is we make one store ring. If after 20 seconds, the store is not ringing, then we throw the phone call to another 20 stores to make sure that somebody answers. If after one minute, nobody answers, then it will propose you to get an appointment. So they will always have an answer. Okay. Thank you. It's a big difference. Yeah, that really answered my question, Never mind. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Great. Okay. Any more questions from investors? Yeah. So, so how many appointments have you facilitated last year? Yeah. Well, uh, we start like uh, seriously, like like really like implementing it in the stores um, in in November. Uh, then at the beginning it was horrible. It was a huge uh, little traffic and a huge rebound rate. Like they discovered the service, they didn't understand it. Ninety eight percent didn't book anything, didn't even click on it. We went down already to 60% of people who is uh, going through the whole carousel and 14% of people who's asking for appointments. Uh, the appointments at the beginning, they were also weaker. Now we are getting like about seven, eight appointments probably per day, uh, but it's increasing. It's increasing all the time. Also, uh, it's a big difference when the stores are in a shopping center and the shopping center is involved as when it's single stores. So it's changing. And the, the biggest challenge now is to get the traffic. Like the conversion rates are amazing. Like there is no doubt. Physical stores have a normal conversion rates of 13%. I know 17% upwards up to 30. Uh, E-commerce one to three, excellent e-commerce five. We got like 70 to 100. So it's the best lead you can ever get. But the traffic is way too low. It's still, it's not uh, the main source of a uh, business. It's gonna take a while for that. But uh, all these CEOs from large corporates, they all want to get into that with, with us or with one of our, our competitors. And, uh, and the traffic is increasing and the people is starting to understand that this service exists and how it works. But it's still the challenge is the, 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 the traffic. One more thing that we're going to do to increase the traffic it's when you are considering a product in the e-commerce. For example, to me, it happens I bought a bicycle. It took me two months to learn about bicycles enough that I could spend several thousand euros on a bicycle. If I had like the connection to connect to a camera and get right to an assistant and tell me, Hernan, this is the bicycle for you, but you're looking at it, it's not the right one for you. I would have bought it right away. I would have saved three months of learning. That the same thing happens with computer engineers. Some of you are probably all your friends call you during the COVID to ask you how much RIM they need. That's the kind of things you want to service like that. So it will be connected also to the products, but that, that's next stage. Mm -hmm. Marius, it answered your question? Yes, thank you. Okay, awesome. Thank you very much uh, for investors who asked questions and Hernan, thanks a lot for being so detailed and opening your answers. Before okay. giving the word to the next founder, I see one of the investors who joined us a little bit late Anton Antic. So Anton, can you please give a brief introduction of yourself? Um, being, I, I will just uh, give a small hint. Anton uh, is uh, the head of InMind in Investment uh, Engine and uh, he's also a venture partner at a uh, few funds. But Anton, say hi and uh, introduce yourself. Yes, hello everybody. And I apologize, there was a small mix up. So I'm from the phone and can I use the video, but I see all the presentations and uh, the previous one was uh, very impressive. Uh, very good job, thanks. And um, I, I was in software uh, pretty much all my career. My biggest and most interesting gig was at Veeam Software. That was the company that grew from zero to one million in sales uh, in 10 years. And it was sold to Inside Venture Partners for five billion a couple of years ago. I was an early joiner and part of the executive team. 
So uh, after that, I made an exit and I built a portfolio of my own startups as an angel investor. And then, as Mali mentioned, uh, started working with a couple of funds, uh, helping them advise their portfolio companies on how to scale globally. That's sort of my passion and specialty. So very good to be here. Thank you, Mali. Uh, thank you, Anton, for joining, uh, despite all the technical problems. And uh, you missed uh, the first part with the introduction of other investors, but I already see that you have a lot in common with Gary from Willy Finance, and you, both of you are in Switzerland. So maybe I should introduce you to each other after this uh, event so you can hang up and get to know each other better. Yeah, I see uh, this uh, sign from Gary. And uh, as you can see on the screen now, we have another startup coming on the stage, Robo IE, startup from Germany, and the founder, Paolo Nunes. Paolo, go on. Hi, everyone. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Um, uh, we are, uh, we are uh, name of our company is To Impulse. We, um, we started as, and uh, we still are a services company. We are AI services company. Uh, we work with uh, insurance, uh, automotive, and pharma companies. Those are our three main verticals. And since a couple of years ago, we started uh, developing uh, our product strategy. And uh, we today are we going, we're going to focus on one of our products called Robo AI. So what problem are we solving? The, the, the main problem is that chat box suck and conversational AI in general sucks. It doesn't offer good experience to the customers. It usually doesn't fulfill the goals of companies that implement it. If I ask an audience to raise your hand, if you like interacting with chatbots, you probably will not raise your hand. There are several reasons to that, and we're not going to get into that today. But the fact is that there is a huge market for this, and it's a growing market, and we expect to play a big role in it as some of our early traction is showing us. We believe that technology is not the only solution. Uh, we believe in the synergy between technology and humans to similarly um, to what our, the previous presentation said, uh, the goal is to leave a customer, to never leave a customer without an answer. So that the customer leaves with a good experience, uh, whether it's a bot or, or a person or a mixture of both. Um, the goal is that the, the, the consumers have a good experience and that they can have that experience on the comfortables that they are on the on the channels that they are comfortable with so and that's what we uh, what we try to do with robo ai we are communications software that facilitates com communications between customers and organizations companies nonprofit uh, government um, customers could be citizens as well uh, customers, citizens use their preferred channels like WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, whatever a messaging app uh, they like to use our website. And they talk to the brand or to the institution they want to talk to through those messaging channels. They can talk to people, they can talk to bots through the same channel. Uh, the, our, our software helps that back and forth. It helps uh, the that this cooperation takes place. And uh, if I start a conversation with a bot and the bot is not able to answer, there's a handover to an agent, but there's also could be a handover to an agent to a bot to do something which is simpler. It doesn't require a specialist anymore. Uh, so our product allows to build such experience and we have some ready to go experiences for insurance, e-commerce and healthcare. Uh, in e-commerce, we have, for example, a very unique uh, e-commerce solution. We have a fully scalable uh, conversational e-commerce solution that scales to a catalog with uh, potentially a million or a few million products. We have, uh, and we have others in, in insurance and healthcare. The competition is strong. We know that. Uh, but the conversations we have every day with customers shows us that the market is huge and that uh, we are in a sort of land grabbing situation. And with the right support, we are confident that we can grab um, a substantial market share and build a scalable business. That is why uh, we are here today. Um, we already have a set of customers. We are very strong in services. We have a very strong team of around 45 people. Uh, we have a, a strong founders team, but we need help into making our business model scalable with our product business. 
So we are looking for something between one and three million to help us scale, to help uh, build a dedicated product team and the commercial organization that will allow us to place this, this product in the markets where we are active. As you see, our traction in terms of services is still our biggest business, but we already have some recurring revenue that we expect to build on this year. And uh, we are looking for uh, investment that helps us get there. Um, thanks done. a lot, Paolo. And I see that Dana is already uh, I'm sorry, uh, 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 asking questions. Dana? Yeah, I have a question, uh, Paolo. Um, uh, this is a quite competitive market being in the fintech industry. We have seen several, too many actually chatbots. What is your competitive edge? And then what makes your product the product to go to, to, go to and to buy? I would say right now our competitive edge is our team. Um, I would say that right now is the quality of, of the solutions we can provide with our product. Uh, we, uh, we work, for example, with Mercedes, and we became over time uh, in Germany their preferred partner for this kind of uh, solutions. And, uh, and we are basically, we convinced them with the quality of our work. So if you ask us uh, if it's a matter of features, there are many similar products in the market. We, uh, we trust in, our, in the quality of the work that we do as a team. Um, it's, we, we sell our, our, our solutions as Chatbot 2.0. It's just a level of quality above everything else that is out there. I'm happy to do a demonstration if, if, you, if you're interested. Um, uh, and can you tell me more about your business model? How do you make money? And uh, if you can tell me afterwards about your funding history and uh, the founder's ownership and the pre-money that you're asking again for, like the one to three million at what pre-money valuation? Okay, you asked like four or five questions. Could you please, uh, could yeah. you please <laughs> summarize again? Okay, can you uh, first was the business model. Can you tell me more about your business model? Bu business model. So business model is uh, we we sell services mostly right now, but uh, the ideally we want to to turn our business model to, into 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 a SaaS model. So we we charge a fee for uh, setting up possibly integrating uh, a chatbot because these things need integration typically. And then as soon as it's running, we get a recurring revenue. Okay. Um, then, yeah. Yeah. What were the next questions? Sorry. Sorry. What were the next questions? Sorry. Yeah. Uh, if you can tell me more about your funding history and then uh, yeah. we are, uh, we are bootstrapped. So the money that we have is the money that we make from services. So we have no investment, except for a small uh, private investor. The company is still completely owned by the founders. Okay, that's quite or good. Or 95% owned by the founders. Okay, so you answered two of my questions. <laughs> okay. And um, and so you're raising one to three million. Do you have any commitments? Uh, don't disclose it. But um, did you um, agree on a pre-money valuation on or it's not yet set in stone? We have we have a a, a money a pre-money valuation, but I would not be comfortable to disclose it here since this is going to be uh, open to the public. Yes, absolutely no problem. Thank you. But I'm happy to discuss it with you uh, in a different setting. Yes, absolutely. Thank we you. will gladly introduce you directly once Dana uh, gives her permission after the event by email. Other questions sure. from Anton, sure. Maurice, uh, Gary? Sure, I have one question. You know, how long does it take the integration of your, you know, product into, you know, enterprise businesses? Um, we have different experiences, but it could be something from five days to six weeks, um, depending on the complexity. But we've done integrations in five days with an automotive customer, for example. And, and what is the cost of the integration? Uh, we usually charge a daily, uh, uh, daily fee. Uh, we have daily rates for that. Um, if you're interested, uh, we can show you a price list. But it's just daily rates like professional services. We offer some typical packages that make that adoption a bit easier and that are a bit cheaper. So we have like three entry packages that are a bit uh, easier to sell than just the, uh, 
the time time and material kind of model. And, and, and right now, you know, what kind of clients do you have? You know, uh, or you're still at the, you know, PLC. Uh... No, we have clients. So the uh, so most of the clients that you see here uh, are using our product. Um, with some exceptions that are not are no longer using it, uh, where we with whom we did a POC, there are two cases, but the others are are using it. Okay. And and a question on the team you mentioned there are forty five people in the company now. Why is it? Uh, I, I I find it quite a lot for the stage of, of the company. Um, well, this is. Uh, this is this is the company that we build uh, uh, around services. So uh, we have uh, we we project about three million of revenue this year. So um, uh, this uh, it, it's just the way it is. We are a bit heavy on on uh, human resources because we are have a part of the company working on the product. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are in we are investing in the product. So. When you ask us, uh, you have any investors? Yes, we are investing. We are pouring a lot of the money we make from the services into this. We have a team that just works on the product. We believe in the product. We invest in it ourselves, but we need help in order to scale it. So we are not a team that uh, is doing did a POC and had the first successes and now is looking for somebody to put the money we have been putting a lot of money and resources into it because we believe in it but we cannot do it by ourselves so we we need some some help in order to scale um and become a real product company mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. thank you any other questions to paulo no not yet okay thank you thanks for the opportunity Thank you for answering the questions. And I think, Paolo, uh, we will get in touch with you after the event, once All we right. have feedback with investors to connect with you. And um, I want to give the word to another founder uh, from Estonia this time. The company name is Ender Turing, and the founder is Alona Iosifova. Alona, please, five minutes. Yes, I'm, I'm muting myself. Uh, hello, everybody. Do you see my screen right now? Yes. Absolutely, thank you. So who we are, Enter Turin, we make human speech understandable for machines and transform it into business insights. So what does it mean actually is a problem. 22 million hours of calls recorded daily, just in Europe. And as you know, audio is not searchable. So there is no possibility to grab any information out of it only less than 2% of calls listened through with the quality control purpose or some education. Businesses lose mostly 98% of information that clients tell them every day, and it leads to billions of lost annually in revenues. We create under Turing speech platform, which is actually taking any kind of source of audio from call centers, video conferences, podcasts, anything, and creates from it searchable and editable content, meeting protocols, different information that can be used for analytics and business insights. Based on this platform, there is possibility to create vertical business solutions. So how we do money, we sell our platform to solution providers and software vendors, and we charge annual subscription of 1,000 euro per CPU core. Actually, how much money does it make us from one client? Usually at approximately 20 to 25,000 annually in revenue from one client. We calculated uh, our market from the bottom to up and we will end up in, with 20, 240 million euro in annual revenues. And currently the speech market itself grows 70.2%. And the projection is that it will grow this tempo next five years. To say more uh, and to refer the previous speech of Paolo, the virtual assistance market for voice grows 39% annually. And that, that those companies who create virtual assistance with voice is actually our customers. 
who our competitors are. Probably you know some of them, at least the bottom two, Google and Amazon. The couple of upper is Vrind and Nuance. Uh, how we are different? Actually, we compete with them really well in different user scenarios. We have a competitive analysis landscape that I can provide after the presentation, sell it by email. This is a one page PDF that will show you how we are different at each use case with, for, for three different use cases. Uh, but you probably will know the best, uh, the, the most important one. We are faster in delivery and cheaper uh, for the end user. Currently, this is a great momentum for us to penetrate the market. And as Gardner says, uh, in five years, 40% of all call centers will use speech to text technology inside. Our current sales pipeline, this is uh, 26 qualified leads. We started developing the technology in August last year, and we have sales pipeline in amount of 146,000 uh, euro that we will release until the Q3 this year. Our core team currently three people, we have one contractor. So actually we created it in four of us. Two of our guys, our CEO, Yevgen and Alex CTO are really deep tech guys. And I'm here doing business and sales after the Abbey, uh, five years of managing position in sales and marketing of technological products in nine countries. We are raising currently 500K for one 18 months runway to reach 20, uh, 250K annual revenues in recurring revenues. And we're actually a little bit early for you guys. <laughs> I understand that. But still, um, we're growing 180% uh, in leads, in qualified leads month after month. And we invested our own money. We have traction. We have paying customer right now already. And actually, four partner contracts signed already. and created two uh, proof of concepts, big, big ones with uh, system integrators. So we are quite solid in our traction. We can keep you updated um, month uh, over month to see how we progress. And also to Anton Antic personally. Anton, we would like to meet you and probably you will help us to scale from this uh, point to a scalable business model. And we will be happy to meet you personally. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Aleona. You are perfectly in time and you use uh, your opportunity uh, um, in uh, all the possible ways. I really like it. And uh, indeed, maybe if some of you consider they are too early. Um, uh, when I met uh, this uh, startup, I thought that they are in that particular stage when sometimes uh, VCs would like to see even early startups uh, to at least have them on radar and observe them. So do you have any questions uh, to Aleona? It seems very interesting idea. I would just like to see the demo, you know, how it really works. And I, I think, you know, I think that will be good enough for me. Um, the demo we can uh, set up. Is it, is it okay? <laughs> okay sure. Uh, sure, we sure. will coordinate with Maurice and uh, if he cool. allows, we will immediately introduce you to each other and you will set up a demo, I hope. Yeah, we can show it uh, even tomorrow. Amazing. We are fast and we will follow up this evening already. Any other uh, so, questions? Yeah, from, from, from me, uh, this is Anton Lanchich, and sorry I'm without the video, but uh, just wanted to comment. Uh, yeah, so guys, uh, I'd be happy to meet and the solution is interesting, but it's actually even more interesting because the current company that I'm uh, in almost a full-time role in, in Tento, well, we are actually integrating uh, these kinds of solution into into one platform, and uh, we're currently doing a lot of AI integrations for machine translation. But text to speech is something we see, and, and speech to text is something we see with our customers as uh, uh, very much demanded areas. So yeah, the there is, is so quite hot. a bit of context, yeah, well, that that we can we can speak about. Yeah. Absolutely, awesome. One more introduction after Thank this you. event. Uh, any other questions or requests for demo? <laughs> maybe questions about our attraction. If I was so fast, uh, so maybe somebody didn't get that. We already have paying customer. We created two uh, proof of concepts. We signed four contracts right now for delivery. And the growth is 
180% month over month. I understand this is early stage. Everybody <laughs> grows fast from zero, but um, just in case you're interested, we can follow up. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Gary, Dana, uh, I, I think that you don't have questions at the moment, yes? Okay, we go forward. Thank you very much, Thank Adona. Thank you, bye. Thank you a lot. So the next startup founder is from UK and the company name is Orbo IE. The founder, Manoj Shinde. Manoj, your time and your mic. Five minutes. Manoj, we don't hear you. Do you? Uh, yeah, I was, I was actually on the mute and, you know, switched off. Mm -hmm. Hi, everyone. This is about 10.30 at night in India. I'm not from UK. Sorry, Nelly, you, you got that wrong. But anyways, um, um, so we're basically Twilio for imaging. Um, what we have built uh, a different kind of company. We spent about four years in AI research. We started in 2016. We started commercializing about literally in the start of COVID, uh, but I've been seeing a tremendous amount of, uh, you know, traction uh, across the globe. Uh, we have six dimension of our products. Uh, primarily focused on visual enhancement and visual extraction and insights, right? Uh, so we have products and IPs that caters to image enhancement to all the way to health, care, health scan uh, enhancement. And, and, and the idea of Orbo is to provide an automation API platform that enables business um, firms and startups to utilize the core competency of AI and computer vision to really scale faster rather than, you know, uh, mushing their head inside the, uh, the AI research and end up building something which is not your forte, right? So the real problem when we started off in 2015, um, the whole idea was to how do you really go beyond legacy image processing and hardware sensors and bring about the visual quality and image uh, uh, quality that is beyond uh, uh, those uh, limitations. And we realize this problem kind of spans through across the business segment. So be it game streaming to surveillance to e-commerce, everywhere the image quality issue was very, very pertinent. And these issues were not only necessarily because of the, the devices, it was also because of the A, bandwidth issues in countries like India and Southeast Asia, a low bit rate, we're experiencing, uh, you know, most of the time in last 10 months, when we are on video conferencing, we switch off our video because our video quality is not so good, right? And then that's one of the reasons also. And then there is a whole network infrastructure and transport protocols that are still very aging and legacy uh, system that have been provided to us. So A, so the system is not evolving as, as we would really like to have it. So what did Orbo did in the four years? Orbo built something very significantly uh, different than most of the companies would end up doing. We actually build a real-time super resolution technology that takes low resolution videos and it converts into high resolution. And we transfer that entire learning from video to images, to documents, to health scans, and to all the way to e-commerce uh, photography, right? This is the real example of on-demand education platform in India. 80% of the customers are coming from uh, tier two, tier three cities and they consume content on mobile phone. But this is what you see on the left-hand side, that content is not legible. And 99% of all the video platforms use traditional video codecs like H2.64 or H2.65, and they're actually pushed through server. What is different in our case, our product is actually reside on mobile device or laptop. That means it's an edge intelligence and edge-based capability that provides um, a constant streaming reduces network costs and reduces data costs for the customer as well. This is one of the reasons why Cisco WebEx is going to roll out Arbo's technology to 100 million users pretty soon. And that's, that's where our partnership, we're running with a go-to-market strategy and business model that is driven by partners. We have top Fortune 500 companies like Intel, Samsung, Microsoft, Cisco, G Healthcare. All of these are inbound customers to us, right? But how did we transfer that learning from video to the other segment? Now, this is the moment that, you know, this is one of the most celebrated Bollywood family in India. And they shared the new year picture. But look at the left side picture. It was so blurry. And it's not something that you would really like to share it on social media. And look what we did on the right hand side. We had a fascinating change in enhancing the quality of image that improves the gratification. 
but we didn't really stop there. We actually extended the same technology for uh, image extraction as well. Today's banking customers and e-commerce customers utilizing our product to do background segmentations or background removal, which is an essence of, of, of the business. Our partners such as TCS and Accenture and Microsoft took us to the largest healthcare and insurance company where we are enhancing documents. This is taking an accuracy of OCR and I'm sure Elona will agree to me. She worked with Abby. Abby is an OCR company. They reached about 80, 85% of accuracy by having a pre-processing pipeline like us We've taken clients from 80% to 95% of accuracy. And the most advanced and, and most credible innovation that has actually come from Orbo is the real-time ultrasound enhancement in partnership with G Healthcare. And, and, and just to add that, last week, we added something called Smart HDR. That means we can actually see inside the shadow uh, while the ultrasound is being done. And it's actually comparable to something what Samsung is doing it. So being a small startup, and being in the research phase, we've achieved a lot. We've created capabilities that are extensible, scalable, and that goes through multiple segments. And hence, we created an automation API that, that, that cuts through multiple business segments. I talked about WebEx. I talked about G Healthcare. Uh, interestingly so, we are also uh, driving our facial recognition tech under the facial enhancement. It's creating a green channel concept for Mumbai Metro, which is a transit system. And it's creating a real-time edge-based facial recognition, making your face as a ticket. And it's an interesting use case to have. What we've, achieved, what we've achieved so far, I already talked about all our customer, 95% of our customers are inbound. We built 14 IPs out of which a couple of them are already patented and us, the rest of them, we will be patenting with our series A raise. What are our strategic partners look like? We cut through Cisco all the way to uh, one of the leading 5G startups in the world by Vodafone UK. That's the kind of credibility that we've got. In terms of achievements, we won all the AI championships across defeating 750 startups in China, 200 startups in Japan, 200 startups in US and uh, in, in India as well. And very recently, we won the Metro Challenge as well. Who do we compete? We compete with one of the largest AI company that sense time raised uh, $3 billion and currently valued at $6 billion or so, right? What does the team look like? I've been in the Silicon Valley for 15 years, uh, managed the acquisition of Reba for Adidas. That was $2.7 billion acquisition. I've got supported by two of the best AI scientists in India right now, and also been blessed to have a father of Intel, uh, who's a, one of our advisor, mentor, and investor in our company. Our clients cut through multiple business geographies, right from Japan uh, to UK, to Spain, to US and India. So we have a wide variety of, so from the day one, we're a global company and this is horrible for you. Okay, thank you very much, Manoj. And sorry again for um, mixing uh, the country of your company with uh, your country. You are in India indeed right now. That's okay. Uh, but the company is in UK, correct? No, so, so we, we, we have an Indian corporation, but uh, we intend to go uh, global with the next round of investment. So. We're either, you know, we're, we're going to create a Delaware entity or a Singapore entity, depending on, you know, what kind of investors that we bring on board. And, okay. and just to give you uh, just one liner, we're raising um, the next round of funding for which we already got $2 million uh, commitment from our existing VCs. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, I see Gary unmuted, so probably he has questions. Yeah, I would love to ask just a good question. Where do you stand in terms of revenues, recurring and, and not recurring, and how much do you want to raise? So, um, you know, while we were in, under research, we've done, you know, to, you know, quite a bit of POCs uh, in the beginning. Real commercialization started in last year, February, which is right in the peak of uh, COVID. Uh, where we closed about $160,000 at that time. And we, are, we have a, 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 a deal book of $1.17 million dollars by end of June 2021. Mm -hmm. And how much do you want to raise? Uh, I don't want to disclose here at this point of time because this has been streamed live. Okay. So we can send you this information. Anyway, each investor will receive the full list of startups which, with the pitch decks and with uh, the profiles on in mind. So we can collect all the additional information and forward it to you or by your request, introduce you directly with the founders. 
Uh, uh, yeah, da David here from DIP London. Just just uh, one question is who's backing you at the moment? You mentioned you, you've got some VCs or institutional. Uh, we've got uh, Brent Hoberman from London. Uh, I'm sure you heard of him. Uh, we've yeah, got founders. Yeah, founders bank capital from Singapore. We've got Vinod Dam from San Francisco. Uh, we've got a leading uh, tier one VC, Your Nest, uh, out of India. So we raised our pre-series A last time for 1.6 mil. Okay. All right. Thanks. Sounds good. Sure. Mm -hmm. Any other questions to Manoj? No, no, no. Okay. I, I don't see... I don't see that anyone raised the hand. So Manoj, thank you very much for your time and for our presentation. It was really thank cool. Thank you so much. Thank uh, you. We will follow up later. Sure. Go to sleep now if it is so late. <laughs> I don't sleep till, entrepreneurs don't sleep till two o'clock at night. <laughs> That's a good approach. So uh, thank thanks you. a lot. And before giving the word to the next uh, two founders, I want uh, to give uh, the word to the most late investor who joined us just in the middle of Manoj's presentation, David Bulton from DIP Capital. David, can you please briefly introduce yourself and uh, your investment focus? Yeah, sure. Sorry, sorry about the lateness, guys. Uh, CET versus UK time GMT was a bit of a mix up for me. I might apologize. Uh, but uh, DIP is a relatively young fund. It's been uh, in the market since 2018, set up to invest in disruptive businesses. So fund one is a 40 million fund targeting series A, series B, series C stage companies with the idea of going out probably end of 2021 to raise uh, fund two, which is gonna be a multiple of this fund probably in the region of 150 to 200 million. Um, our key uh, kind of sweet spot is B2B, B2B to C, but also marketplaces, B2B on one side, B2C on the other side. Asset light, highly scalable businesses, so software rather than hardware businesses. Amazing. Thank you very much, David. And you can see that um, your focus matches with uh, other investors' focus here. And uh, I want to give uh, the word to amazing uh, founder. Uh, she, uh, the company is from Estonia. I hope I will not make any more mistakes with the geography. Uh, the company QP and the co-founder Alina Kornienko. Alina, Nick is yours. Five minutes, please. Hello, everyone, uh, and I hope you see my screen. Um, so what are we working on at QP? QP is a digital payment solution consolidating your bank cards and accounts. And QP has gone further than Google Pay and Apple Pay to develop an AI solution that chooses the right card at the moment of payment. And at these pandemic times, we're closely working on improving and expanding worldwide contactless payment solutions and contactless bank account, uh, digital bank account opening in just five minutes using your smartphone or tablet only. So QP was founded back in 2000. 2017 by a group of tech enthusiasts with over 15 years of financial and IT top management experience of companies with over $1 billion annual revenue. And so after a successful launch uh, and development of a unique payment solution gathering all types of banking operations with both digital and traditional assets within one decentralized application, we're now uh, launching a revolutionary all-in-one financial application um, not only for bank cards consolidation or accounts, but also NAA-based recurrent payments, um, expenses and investment automatization, gift cards consolidation, and cost planning solution. So that's how our solution actually is structurized. Here you can see the market we are uh, focusing and working on. And so since uh, the launch of the first version of our application back in 2018, we have won over such important European markets as Germany, UK, Spain, Italy, Norway, Denmark, and Poland. We're extremely present in the CIS countries in Russia, and we're now expanding our services to Latin America and to Africa later this year. Uh, so we are fully profitable. We're fully licensed. We are funding ourselves, and we're now obtaining, uh, in the middle of obtainment of our own uh, EMI license in the UK. And uh, by the end of this quarter, we will be 
already delivering um, our own prepaid cards to our European Union customers and later this year to our customers from other regions. Uh, so our metrics uh, for uh, the 2020, the transaction volume over 38 million euros, our revenue over um, 600,000, uh, and our expenses are uh, from 70 to 90k euro per month. And as I've said, we are fully licensing, uh, we are fully funding our services and our uh, internal works. And so uh, by 2024, our goals are a transaction volume over 28 billions of euros. Our revenue would be over 500 million euros with net present value over 450 million of euros and internal rate of return uh, 113% and with over 3 million of active users all around the globe. Uh, and so today we are raising our uh, round. Uh, so that's our team. So now we're raising our round uh, of, uh, because we're expanding our services, of 3 million euros for a uh, 10% share. And I would be really happy to answer any of your questions. Thank you, Alina. Thanks a lot. So any questions from investors? Who wants to start? So, so just a, a question from my side is, I mean, what differentiates you from the other players in the market and what makes you feel that you're able to be, become the winner? Um, actually, as I've shown, the market is very big and uh, exposes a lot of opportunities for uh, different services. But because we are a fintech project, we already differentiate a lot from other similar services. In fact, that we combine uh, both technology and the market opportunity. So as, for example, our biggest unicorn competitors like Revolut, Monzo, N26, they are focusing uh, more on some segments of the market and they're less uh, technology uh, oriented as we are um, returning again to the AI solution that we're developing now that I was talking about in the beginning of my pitch. And also uh, today we are already gaining customers of our larger competitors because we provide uh, a different uh, service politics and customer approach, uh, different fees that they are offering. Uh, so that that's why we are already getting some clients from the, the existing huge competitors. Did it answer your question, David? Yeah, I, I answered my question. I guess just a follow up question on that is, you know, what kind of uh, impact and why do you believe that you're able to kind of uh, to, to compete against the Revolut and the Monzos. I mean, these guys have a, a, a large war chest um, at their you know, uh, availability. So what makes you feel that your AI is gonna be able to compete against these guys and, and, and keep your margins at a, at a kind of a rate, which means that you can be profitable in, in the mid to long term? Um, actually, uh, our competitors are not working on those AI consolidation solutions that we are working, and they're not uh, working on providing a better and unique personal banking customer experience that we're working on by consolidating and offering at the same level all types of financial and investment and payment operations our customers might need all around the globe. Okay, thanks. Understood. Thank you. Thank you, David. Um, Donna, I see you did not unmute yourself, so probably you don't have questions, but being the, uh, uh, the heaviest expert in the field, uh, uh, maybe you have some comments. I actually uh, received QP's pitch before. I went through it, and yeah, and uh, it's quite interesting. I like your products, but um, this is not the thing that we actually are looking for as a VC, but it's quite good. Um, I like that you're profitable uh, while you're still early on in the business. But um, you said you have a commitment. Sorry, sorry, you're raising 3 million euros. Do you have any commitments today? Um. I will not disclose this information for this public speech. I hope you understand. Yeah, okay, no worries. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. 
if you wish to get this question um, answered by email, we will gladly facilitate it. Okay, no more questions from investors to Alina? Good, then we move forward. Alina, thank, thank you. you very much for your presentation and uh, hope to get connected after this. And uh, the next founder I want to give the word is uh, the company from Italy, um, CEO and founder Elena Pascal, and the company is EcoSteer. Elena, five minutes, please. Hi, hello, and thank you very much for having waited uh, for me until now. Um, I am Elena, Elena Pasquale, and I'm co-founder and CEO of EcoSteer. We are an IoT and blockchain software company, and our data ownership platform lays the foundations for a new distributed and decentralized data economy. In fact, today, the data economy is monopolistic and strongly centralized. That means that uh, the data brokering platforms uh, with which we share uh, data daily have full control, exclusive control over access to our data. EcoSteer decentralizes the data economy by technically applying the data ownership principle established by the GDPR. Our data ownership platform adds a layer of data access control decentralization over any data brokering platform. And it does so with two key mechanisms, end-to-end encryption and blockchain smart contract. Data is encrypted at, at its source, for example, car telematics. It crosses a data broker still encrypted and it reaches its final destination, a stakeholder application still encrypted. It will only be decrypted after the explicit consent from the data owner, consent that is given through a smart contract. Importantly, we have been granted a US patent on our technology just two months after its filing. We uh, see our technology uh, used in corporate data streams marketplace, where uh, corporations such as utility or mobility companies will be able to share their customers' data with their business partners in compliance with the GDPR and with a rewarding user experience. In fact, uh, marketplaces will, of course, be different, but they will all have two features in common. They will give data owners, ourselves, full visibility over all uh, potential data users and the possibility to grant and revoke data access and uh, to be rewarded in tokens for sharing this access. Tokens that will be used uh, on the marketplace. So for example, my car data might be worth uh, one token per day and with 30 tokens, I might buy a 10% discount on, a, on an insurance. The same concept applies, of course, on other kind of uh, corporate marketplaces, such as utility marketplaces. And in fact, our two initial target sectors are energy and mobility, as they are the sectors with the largest IoT investment in the field, and of course, very, very large consumer bases. Our um, revenue model is based on software licenses, based on the number of you know, connected, connected IoT devices, and with this kind of model, we project, uh, uh, we project uh, um, over 30 million revenues uh, with just 2% penetration of our target market in Italy. We've already got traction. Our first client is Alperia, the, U U uh, the South Tyrol utility. And we got partnerships in place with large players such as PwC and NTT. We are in a market space that is populated by digital right management solutions and marketplace and market and data marketplaces. But as a matter of fact, our data ownership platform is complementary to both in that current data marketplaces are based on the centralized data distribution paradigm I showed you at the beginning. And thus they could benefit from a layer of data access control decentralization and digital right management solutions could sit on the right of our picture. We are a very small team, but all together we got all skills required to kickstart companies' growth. And we've already, well, we've actually been just granted another patent in addition to the first one, and we've obtained a number of recognitions. Uh, we've already got fundings uh, from a private investor as well as from, uh, uh, from uh, uh, the province of Bolzano, where we are based. And we are seeking at the moment for a 500K convertible in order to be able to close our first client deployment cycle and quickly move to an A-series funding. 
And I'm happy to say that our vision is aligned with the one of the European community about the potential for um, you know, uh, decentralized technologies to empower individuals to be in control of access to their data and of course, to uh, promote uh, digital participations in a new data sharing economy. So thank you very much for your attention and I'm happy to take your questions. Elena, thanks a lot. And uh, you were pitching with such a, a charming intonation that it was like uh, listening to the uh, storytelling of fairy, ta fairy tale. Uh, very nice. Uh, any questions from investors? Who wants to start? Uh, a, a question. I, I have a question around um, the rollout and onboarding. How does it? How does it actually work? Is there any physical devices that you need to kind of sell to the customers, or is it all uh, onboarding done through? Uh, digital mechanisms and what does the onboarding process look like for you guys? Uh, uh, it's, a, it's a typical um, it, it's a typical software upgrade that is done on air as it happens on daily on our mobiles. Uh, our platform, our data ownership platform, as I said, is an overlay network. And it, it has been designed with such a small footprint that it could actually be installed on microcontrollers. So we've already got a number of collaboration uh, collaborations in place. Uh, uh, with a number of software vendors and, of course, including um, Amazon Amazon Web Services. Okay, no, it's clear. And and just so, so I understand, I mean, what's the what? Are, how strong are the patents? Because I guess one of the things that goes through my mind is this is a simple type of uh, piece of software and easy to kind of uh, replicate. Just you can look at the amount of capital you've spent and time for a big player. It should be easy to replicate. Uh, within it. I mean, all software can be replicated, but it should be relatively easy. And you're going against some of these huge players out there in the market, such as Amazon, etc., right? Where those guys could see, okay, this is a, a definitely something that we should have. In a buy and build situation, how do how do your patents hold up? I mean, well, is it is is it uh, easy for for these guys to kind of do themselves or? Uh, well, as a matter of fact, uh, no, we don't think so, because it, um, from a point, from an inventive point of view, it brings together quite a number of different competencies that our CTO brings together, from electronics to uh, highly distributed and parallel and parallel computing systems uh, uh, and parallel computing systems. Mm, from a point of view of actual IP protection, our patent is very broad in that it actually uh, protects the entire ar system architecture that I showed you before. Uh, you know, be very happy to, you know, you've seen the number, be very happy to, uh, to, to send it to you again separately. And uh, we've actually got 30 claims on this patent and they've all been accepted without a single objection. So, you know, the patent per se is extremely strong. Okay, and I guess, um, I guess I saw in your presentation that you're focusing on Italy, dominating the Italian market to start with. Uh, is that just until Series A? Is that just yeah, until- Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's just a matter of resources, as you as you as you've seen. You know, we got two business development resources and three uh, three software software development and project deployment resources. So the kind of money that I'm looking for uh, will enable me to acquire three more resources, uh, three more technical resources, possibly a senior resources to deploy a complete uh, client, uh, you know, complete uh, a complete um, project, a complete uh, project with the scale up phase. Because at the moment our uh, where resources only allow us to do, uh, you know, set project setup and deployment, but the actual scale up is something that we simply do not have the resources to do, even in a scenario, which is the one that we are applying, where actually we transfer our skills to system integrators. Even supporting system integrators requires resources, as you very well know. Okay, I'll, I'll let somebody else ask a question instead of hugging the floor. <laughs> Hey, one I question from, yeah, sure. one, one question from my side. So I understand there's a data marketplace element and then you would sell the data to uh, to some third party. So what, what's the vision on that? Who, who would buy these large batches of data and what's sort of the minimum size of your database that is worthwhile selling? Hey, let, let, me, let me ask by clarifying a few issues. So first of all, we don't sell a, a data marketplace. We sell our data ownership platform that is a solution that can enable corporations to create their own marketplace. So uh, the onboarding of both customers on the, you know, on the uh, left-hand side of our picture and 
business partners will be actually managed by the corporation. So typically, uh, you know, uh, utilities have got uh, uh, consumer bases that varies from a few hundred thousands from to several million. So obviously there is a huge customer basis there. Um, and uh, there is no database. So we apply, uh, you know, the kind of architecture that our paradigm is based on is a classic publish subscribe. So the broker there is, uh, is simply a, um, a media to uh, present data to third party application. So uh, there is a publisher, a device typically, there are subscribers, a number of applications, and the data flows through the broker without being persisted anywhere. The broker doesn't see the data, so it can actually be, uh, you know, the neutral server that uh, the European the European community and many companies are looking for at the moment. And you can actually envisage a scenario where there might be a number of these of neutral brokers and several corporate marketplaces built on top of them. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And, and what are the typical use cases that you envision where... Uh, What's the end benefit of, of being able to subscribe to these to these published uh, data feeds that go through the broker? Well, uh, the end the end benefits are two. Uh, the first is actually to generate a new revenue stream because data has a value. We have been running researches as well as uh, focus groups, whereby the consensus around, uh, uh, for example, energy data data coming from. Uh, second generation smart smart energy meters is about 60 euros per year per per consumer so you know you can already see what uh, you know the kind of the kind of revenues for a large utility could be and uh, actually data coming from cars is worth much more than that so obviously the revenue stream is there the other is actually a possibility of creating a new user experience think about it you know um, in, at the end of the day we are targeting uh, co sectors that sell commodities. How many times in a year do you think of, a, of your utility? Three or four when you get the bill. We would, we would create a, 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 um, a new user experience that would actually make a user, a consumer, think about their utility multiple times a day and think about it as an ethical company, a company that is actually willing to share their gains with them. Thank you. You're very welcome. Any more questions to Lena? Yeah, I just uh, for, just one more question for me. I'm sorry, uh, but okay. uh, just just to be transparent, I, I'm on the board of a company called WeJo, which is the uh, market leader for connected car uh, data monetization. So, um, look, happy to kind of have a conversation with you afterwards, but. Uh, Obviously, uh, I don't really want you guys to be too involved in in in, in this uh, WeJo in this space because you could uh, you could cause issues, especially with data uh, transfer, etc. But uh, one of the things that I've learned from dealing with these guys is that you know time is also uh, uh, very important. I mean, you know, is there anything that in your process that kind of um, even milliseconds even is causing the data? transfer between one participant and the other to slow down or reduce or be impacted or are you are you targeting more of the batch data where it's, it's uh, well data, it, 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 do, it does not depend on us as a matter of fact you know we use the blockchain as um as a as a as a as a, as a tool to establish a, a contractual rel relationship between data owner and data user the blockchain, uh, the impact on the blockchain has no relationship whatsoever with the volume of data that goes through that goes through a broker. So you know that kind of issue is an issue that uh, uh, is not uh, is not addressed by our technology. So our technology does not have any any impact on the transmission of data, and it doesn't have any impact on the delay that transmitting data could have. In terms of you know, how, does the encryption, um, how does the encryption actually impact on it? Well, we're flexible. We can use any kind of encryption if that's actually a requirement for, if, if there, is, there are actually strict uh, latency requirements for the system. So extremely open to that. 
Okay. No, I think that's clear. Okay, and over to the rest. So, sorry. <laughs> oh, thank you. No problem. So, do we have any other questions to Elena? No, not anymore. So um, I want uh, to remind one more time that uh, each investor will receive literally um, within an hour after this session, the list with all participating startups, with all their startup profiles on in mind and all their pitch decks. And uh, feel free uh, to give us feedback and say, we want to connect with this, this, this founder. We will immediately make an introduction and put you uh, together with each other. And uh, we are perfectly in time today. Uh, uh, we just uh, did it in one hour and a half, but let me ask just a few more minutes of your time, please. And if investors will kindly agree to give maybe some feedback or one uh, short advice uh, to founders who were pitching today and those who were watching us today, there were around 100 uh, people watching live stream at some period of time. Um, what, um, what would you advise uh, for uh, the next time? Maybe you've noticed some mistakes or something was missing in the presentations. How to be better and more prepared? Um, can I go first? Sure. Um, um, well, I believe that founders are, are the one, sorry, <laughs> there are kids downstairs. So I believe the one doing the pitch should be clear about the competitive edge of their product. So we live in a highly digital world. I advise entrepreneurs to be clear about what makes their product different, um, who the target audience are and their plans to acquire them. It's really important also for startups to explain their business and revenue model. As an investor, I want to make money how can your product make me money? Tell me more about that. And uh, as for startups with live products, I would like to know about their traction, their revenues, as that validates the scalability of their offering. I'm sorry, there are kids downstairs. <laughs> it's quite noisy. So that's it from my side. Oh, thank you so much, Dana. We are tired to repeat the same thing, that product is important, but traction is the king when you talk to investors. Thanks a lot for underlying it one more time. Um, who else wants to give an advice? David, you I, think, I think anyway. I, I was going to say, I think Dana said everything, right? I mean, one, one of the ways that I always like to start one of these questions with, a, with an entrepreneur is to understand a little bit of their background as well. You know, what was the ha-ha moment? Where, how did they think about putting the team together? And I think that kind of helps me quickly understand the mindset that they're, that they're looking at when they're looking at the business. It helps a lot. Oh, nice. So a little bit storytelling about background and how yeah. it came to the mind. Okay, thank you very much. It's a good point. Gary? Yeah, there's there's really not much left to cover, but uh, I'll, I'll give it a shot. Uh, I think, first of all, the, the founders have done an, an awesome job, and obviously the hardest job in the world is to be a founder. So uh, thanks a lot for, for making the time for this and, and for your presentations. Uh, so much appreciated. I think what's, uh, what, what I think some of you have done uh, amazingly well, and, and I encourage um, maybe everyone to do the same, to, uh, um, to explain your product in a way that's, that's sort of very tangible. And, and, and if you can give a, qu a quick product demo or, or sort of a, a, a quick and, and very practical example, that always helps us to, to sort of ground that, that this is what, what, uh, what you do and, and makes the rest of the conversation much uh, easier and quicker. Perfect, Gary. Thank you so much. And uh, Anton, would you like to add something? Uh, no, I really liked uh, this session and uh, the advice that was given already. Uh, I just wanted on the previous uh, on the previous comment. I just wanted to say that probably every investor preference is uh, a little bit individual. But I'd say that, yeah, traction is king. So if you can show that you're growing 300% every year with the base of, uh, I don't know, 10,000 customers, then obviously everybody will talk to you. So that's, that's the best way. But if you can show traction or if you are very early in the, in the process, then yeah, looking at your product is probably the best, uh, the best that, that you can do to, to give the investors the impression of what you're working on and why people... Uh, we'll start using it uh, eventually. So, but overall, yeah, very good pitches and then good startups. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Anton, uh, for your comments. And uh, Maurice have left us without saying bye, but we will forgive him for that. 
And uh, I want to say one more time, thank you. Big thank you to every dear investor who is here with us. And even those who were late, uh, you will also receive the recording versions and the pitch deck. So you will enjoy it uh, privately when you have time. Uh, and uh, to each and every founder who was uh, so uh, brave and uh, well prepared to pitch today, uh, guys, uh, we will do our best uh, to facilitate the connections with these and uh, other investors and uh, uh, hope that we will see deals uh, coming out of that, VC deals and also deals in uh, uh, partnerships, uh, sales, uh, pilots, uh, commercial pilots, etc. So thank you very much. The next session will be on February uh, for um, in Iberian startups, so from Spain, Portugal, etc. And the next one we will also prepare for a little bit earlier stages. Though there is a lack of early stage capital on the market, but we will do our best to bring some active investors in that segment. So thanks you to you all, and uh, we will be in touch. And I will go and write my follow-ups to you. That's great. Be kind. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank bye you. Bye. Take care. Bye now. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.